Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the scrapbookpal.com channel. I'm Bridget Casey. Today we are going to be working with Lawn Fawn Just Plain Awesome Stamp and Die Set. So I show you a few things when we begin out, one of which is the Just Plain Awesome Stamp Set and the Die Set that coordinates with it. We are also, there is available in the shop, um, the sentiment trails. I didn't use those. Um, and then the cloud background stencil, I did end up using. So the project kind of changed as we worked our way through it. So I'm beginning with my stamp wheel and I'm going ahead and I'm putting in the stamps that I'm going to use. And I know this because I had to create this a couple of times. So I already knew what I was doing um, as I was going through this process at this point. And you see me putting the sentiment all the way over on that edge. I'm trying to align it with that edge so I know that it's straight. That always seems to be an uh, area of difficulty for me is getting sentiment straight. So I'm using Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink, which is safe for alcohol markers, which we are going to use Copic markers today. So I am stamping this twice, removing a cat hair and <laughs> stamping down again. Now I will use the VersaFine Nocturne Claire ink to stamp my sentiment. I just needed once with that. So we'll remove that and then I'm going to get my clear embossing powder and I'm going to put that over the top and that will stick. I will get my heat tool warming up, come over, bring the heat tool to it. I like to heat from the back to the front to the back. I feel like I get a nice, beautiful, um, clean line. So I wanted two of the heart images. As I said, I've made this card twice at this point. Um, so lot, lots going on. So I'm beginning with my Copic coloring and I'm beginning with R59 and I'm coloring in all the areas that are going to be red. And since it's my third time making the card, it's a lot easier. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to use R29. And I'm just extending out the darker line of the R59. Finally, I'm coming in with R46. Now I do kind of lose some of the color that I wanted. So I do um, come back in with the R59 once all of my reds are complete to add some more definition. And I'm skipping the R29 and I'm just coming in with the R46 so that I don't lose as much definition. I'm doing R20 for the centers of the ears and R00 to pull that out. R30 for the little mouse noses, so cute. C8 for the darkest and C6 to finish off their little goggles, <laughs> they're so cute. E43 for my mice. I do forget to do the top uh, two mice on this one, but like I said, it's um, it's been a process to get here. So now we have E42, and so we're coloring in the mice, and I'm not realizing that the top mouse is not colored at all. I do catch on. There we go. I've caught on that the top mouse is not colored. So we're going back and just adding where I think it would be darker, pulling that out with the E42. And then once we've done that, we can use E41 on all of the sections for all of the little mice. Super, super cute. So now I'm going to come in with W3 and I'm adding that where I think it would be darkest on the little airplanes. So basically anywhere a critter is holding on or where there's a small space. And then I'm dragging that out to a W2 and adding detail and then finally we'll finish off with w1 oh they're just so cute all i could think of was snoopy and the red baron while i was doing this card so i'm beginning with the cloud stencil stencil one the first one um and distress oxide ink and festive berries i wipe off in between but i don't make you watch that because it's not that invigorating and exciting i am using a picket fences life-changing blending brush as i'm going through so I had festive berries, spice marmalade, squeezed lemonade. Then I'll finish with cracked pistachio on this one. I may fit in a little mermaid lagoon, but I'm trying to really focus and get the cracked pistachio into very specific areas. And I do, I am able to squeeze in a little bit of mermaid lagoon on the end. 
the great thing about the stencil set, so I'll peel it up and have you have a look. Um, the great thing is there are etched lines that go over some of the clouds that you've already done. So it helps you to align it so that you get the look kind of that was intended. Um, and many times when we buy these products, we want to mimic the look um, that we've seen in the videos showing us the product. So I began with squeeze lemonade here, then move through to cracked pistachio. I am using the same blending tool. I'm just wiping it off um, on a microfiber cloth on the side, the same one that I'm cleaning the stencil with as I go. Uh, so now we're on to Mermaid Lagoon and I'm putting that into very kind of focused areas a little bit. I say kind of focused. <laughs> it's kind of an um, oxymoron kind of focused. Um, and I'm trying to get it in some of the smaller areas essentially. Now I'll come in with Wilted Violet. And again, I'm trying to get that in some smaller areas. I wanted to get as much color as possible onto this project. And we'll finish off with Festive Berries. When I originally did this project the first couple of times, I did it with white cardstock. And every time I was a little disappointed at the end because it was so stark white. So I was super stoked to be able to do it with this kind of light blue cardstock this time so that it looks like the sky with these beautiful rainbow clouds. Now I'm adding Avery L. It's a clear shimmer. So I'm sprinkling that all over because I just feel like if they're flying around up there, it's shimmery, it's pretty up in the clouds. So once that's dried, I've trimmed my panel down to an A2 panel, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm now adding leftover bits of adhesive that I have stuck to my mat all over the back of the sentiment and of my little critters, tucking it in where I can and trimming it down. So we'll get all the set, all the adhesive into place. Then we're going to go ahead and take um, a pair of double uh, reverse tweezers, sorry, and put the sentiment into place. I like to do that so my hand is not in the way and I get the straightest line that I can get using my alignment mat. Use whatever type of alignment mat or tool that you do have, possibly a T-square ruler if you don't have a mat. So I've placed all of my guys and then I'm going to put my hearts. Um, I did do two of those and I'm putting those down with uh, Tombow permanent adhesive. And there we go. That is our card for today. Thank you so much for watching. Head on over to the scrapbookpal.com channel to like and subscribe. We can't wait to see you in the next video.